Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on the Keeping Garments White podcast, where we endeavour to bring scriptural words of encouragement to help you in keeping your garments pure and white and unspotted from the world. This is, of course, the first episode of the Keeping Garments White podcast, and being so, I'll first give a short introduction to myself before getting into the real meat of today's episode. My name is Jared Walter, and I'm a Christadelphian living in the hot and dry state of South Australia. I created this podcast, hoping that I would be able to brighten people's weeks and spiritually uplift them with colourful meditations on the Word of God. But what do I mean when I say a meditation? Well, the dictionary defines a meditation as a written or spoken discourse expressing considered thoughts on a subject. And while that is essentially true, to me a good meditation goes above and beyond that. From a very young age, I've always been an avid reader of books. I remember the first full series that I read was The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, and I would read one or two chapters to myself before going to bed. I loved this whole series, The third book especially, The Horse and His Boy, was my favourite. I found it so hard to put this book down. I was so enamoured with its world that I read through it in one sitting. Something about this book in particular felt so magical and so real to me. I felt almost like I was a part of the story, as though I were living it for myself, and it was no longer just words on a page to me. And that, I feel, is what a good meditation is able to achieve. It allows you to become fully immersed in a subject through presenting a story in a way that makes it feel real. You feel the emotions as though you are a part of it. And this is something that Yahweh intends for us to gain from reading his word. As said in Hebrews 4 verse 12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of heart and of mind. God intends for his word to pierce into our hearts and minds, to feel real, living and active. I think the most exquisite examples of this in scripture are the vibrant pictures that Yahweh has given us of the future. My favourite picture of the kingdom is found at the end of Revelation. I would like to read for you now the first five verses from Revelation 22 and do it in such a way that I hope may help you to feel more immersed in the text. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also. On either side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Yahweh gave us this beautiful picture because he wants us to be able to see ourselves as part of the story, as really being there in that future day that we hope for, and to be inspired by that. Now, if you're listening and thinking to yourself that you can't remember the last time you were truly immersed in Yahweh's word, then I want you to know that you are not alone. It is so hard, even with these vibrant visions of the future we have in the Bible, to keep it feeling real and something that we will truly be part of. And that is because, well, unfortunately, Our present reality is just so much more present and real than the future reality we hope to be a part of. 
The stresses of this life so often ground us in the here and now, making it hard to let our minds be free to meditate on the visions of the future that God has given us. And yet, we must remember that in every deficiency we feel we might have in appreciating and meditating on Yahweh's word, he is always here for us. Reading from Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Every time you feel the weight of this world wearing down on you, and that your deficiencies are too overwhelming for God's mercy, just take a step back and remember that His mercy is always sufficient towards those that seek Him. Remember that the reason God wants us to be inspired by His Word is because He loves us and He desperately wants to see us there as a part of His Son's future kingdom. If He has already gone so far as to give His only begotten Son so that we could be there in that day, then really what have we to fear? Soon this world, with all its stresses, will be gone, and we will have no need to meditate on the future anymore, because the kingdom will be here. And I hope that in some way, this podcast can help in reaffirming your vision of that future. So, having explained my perspective on what a good meditation is, I should probably explain where the title of this podcast comes into play. Keeping Garments White This is an expression taken from Ecclesiastes 9 verse 8, which says, in context, Go, eat your bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart, for God has already approved what you do. Let your garments be always white. Let not oil be lacking on your head. Enjoy life with the wife whom you love, all the days of your fleeting life that he has given you under the sun, because that is your portion in life, and in your toil at which you toil under the sun. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in the grave to which you are going. Here Yahweh is telling us that this life we have right now is a fleeting gift from him, and that even with all the stresses of this life, we should be able to feel at ease with what Yahweh has given us, recognizing that he has already approved us to be a part of that coming day that we so hope for, once again encouraging us to keep that vision of the future. And that's why I think the title is so fitting for this podcast. But what does it mean to keep our garments white and our heads anointed with oil? Well, as Ecclesiastes 9 verse 8 shows, these two actions are closely related. When someone is anointed with oil in the Bible, it signifies that they are a chosen vessel of Yahweh's that he desires to bless and work through. But receiving this anointing also requires you to be in submission to Yahweh's will. Take Psalm 45, written by one of the sons of Korah in contemplation of their king, and figuratively Christ. Verse 7 You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the same way, the wearing of white garments signifies a moral character that is able to keep itself unspotted from the world. There are many passages I can turn to for this, but I think Revelation 3 verse 4 to 5 summarizes it perfectly. Christ, in speaking to the church in Sardis, says, Yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. 
The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And you can also take this lesson from the Old Testament regarding the offerings that God sought from the Israelites. In Leviticus 23 verses 18 to 20, God asks for a burnt offering of seven white lambs without blemish or without spot as it can also be translated. And from this, you get the picture that the wearing of unspotted white garments likens us to those sacrificial lambs who were given over in complete submission to Yahweh. That, in a sense, is what we should strive to achieve in our lives for our Lord, to act in a way that is in submission to his son's commandments, who is our figurative shepherd. To finish, I would like to read two passages from the Bible that show the future results of having our heads anointed with oil and keeping our garments white. Keep in mind in these passages the ties back to sheep. And as before, I would like to read it in a way that hopefully helps you in feeling immersed. The first passage is Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the second passage is Revelation chapter 7, verses 13 to 17. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And so my challenge for you in the week ahead is that whenever the stress of this current life overwhelms you, and you begin to feel that your garments are becoming spotted, and the oil on your head is drying up, that you repeat these words to yourself, new every morning, and recognize the incredible hope for the future that we have, and the desire of Yahweh to get us there.